Hey everyone, my name is Paul, and in this video, I'll show you how to fix the clock in your first generation RAV4. Now before we start, let's talk about the procedure a little bit. In my RAV4, you have to drop the steering column to remove the dashboard trim piece. That's because this black instrument cluster trim doesn't fit past the steering column trim right here. Now I heard in newer RAV4s, like the 1998 and newer model years, this piece is a little bit easier to take out. So if you can get it out, then you don't need to drop the steering column. Remove the radio faceplate first. Take out two Phillips head screws under the radio trim bezel. Loosen the plastic dash trim by pulling it toward you, then the radio trim will go straight down. Put your fingers behind the center locking differential, hazard, and defroster switches to push them out. Unplug the three switches and set them down in the same order on the passenger side floor mat. Pull off all four climate control knobs. Put your fingers behind the plastic to release the clips holding the climate control trim. Pull out the AC button and bezel. Remove the rubber ignition switch ring. I arranged the parts neatly on the passenger floor mat to keep them organized. Remove two Phillips head screws from the plastic trim under the steering wheel and pull the panel toward you to release the clips. Pull out the fuse box and take the cable out of the hood release handle. It's a little bit tricky. Remove three bolts from the metal panel with a 10mm socket. Push in the push pin by about 3mm to release it, then remove the lower vent. Take one Phillips screw out of the lower steering column trim. Wiggle the panel to unsnap it from the upper plastic, but don't remove it. Take out this weird piece of metal covering the steering column bolt. I made a pile of parts in the back seat to keep them organized. Use a small flathead screwdriver to unplug the connector from the brake switch. If you haven't guessed what's happening by now, I'm removing the steering column. I know, I'm not happy about it either but this is the way. Push the lower trim to the side to get the socket on the two upper steering column bolts. I arranged the bolts on the driver's floor mat in the same order I removed them. Bend the plastic a little bit toward you to let the ignition switch slide past it and gently set the steering column down on the floor. Take one Phillips screw out to loosen the dashboard trim, then pull the bottom corners toward you to release the clips. Take out two more screws holding the dash trim panel. Pull the big dashboard trim on the left and right sides to release the clips. Before taking it down, unplug the clock. Move the shifter back and set the dashboard trim on top of it. If you watched my previous video where I installed LED lights in the dashboard, you'll know I took this apart a few times and I have some practice. Today I timed myself and it took me 5 minutes and 40 seconds to get to this point. So, don't be intimidated by having to remove the steering column. Unplug the dimmer switch and pull the dashboard trim out of the car. Set it upside down on a towel so you don't scratch the plastic. The clock is held in by two screws. Use a small flathead screwdriver to gently pry the four tabs on the clock to open it up. The circuit board inside is held by two small Phillips head screws. Just pull it straight up to remove it. Notice the four terminals have springs on them. They connect power to the circuit board. In the next step, I'll be soldering the circuit board. You need solder and a soldering iron. A good solder for electronics is 60% tin and 40% lead. Rosin core means the soldering wire is hollow and has a cleaning chemical inside. If you don't use rosin, the solder won't stick. I use a butane soldering iron because it heats up fast and is convenient with no cord. It is more expensive and you have to buy a can of butane too. The cheapest option is the electric plug-in soldering iron. You can get a whole kit for $14 that includes solder too. This tool is less convenient and takes longer to heat up. It's good enough to fix the clock and plenty of other electrical stuff. Wait for the soldering iron to get hot enough to melt the solder. Coating the end with solder is called tinning the tip because solder contains tin. You don't want a big glob of solder though, so wipe off the extra with a wet paper towel or a dry one if you want to start a fire. The solder on the three main power resistors tends to crack, which doesn't let electricity through to the clock. Melting the solder and adding a little bit of new solder fixes this problem. Touch the tip of the soldering iron and some new solder to the edge of the resistor at the same time. It doesn't take much solder. 
Notice it leaves a shiny little glob of solder on the edge of the resistor. I only spend two to three seconds on each connection. That's all it takes. If you hold the soldering iron longer than that, you will burn the circuit board and destroy it. I didn't edit this clip so you can get a realistic feeling of time. It took me 45 seconds to re-solder all the resistors. If you put too much solder on the resistor, wipe off the soldering iron, then use it to take a little bit off. A good solder joint is shiny when it's done. If you move it while it's cooling, you'll get a dull finish and you should redo it. Reinstall the circuit board and make sure all four pins go through it. The two small Phillips head screws hold the circuit board down. Stack the plastic buttons and gray rubber pieces into the clear clock housing. Hold the clock facing down so the buttons don't fall out and snap it closed. Now let's plug the clock into the car to test it. Turn the ignition key to the on position. And the clock works. That's great. Okay, let's put the clock back into the dash trim panel. Two screws and it's ready to go back in the car. Gently set the main dash panel in place, but don't push it in. Plug in the clock. Now you can line up the dash trim and snap in the left and right sides. Pull out the connectors for the three switches above the radio, then reinstall two Phillips head screws under the gauges. The dash trim goes in at the top first, then snap the lower corners in place and install one Phillips screw. Lift the steering column up by the wheel and bend the plastic out toward you to let the ignition lock slide past it. Use a coffee mug to support the steering wheel. Push the front steering column bracket onto the studs and thread the two nuts all the way on by hand. Install the left bolt first. It's easier to reach than the right side. Use a socket to spin the bolt on, but don't tighten it yet. Push the trim out of the way and thread in the right side bolt using a socket with an extension. Make sure the steering column is straight and tighten the bolt. Remember to tighten the left side bolt and the two nuts holding the steering column. Plug in the brake switch. Reinstall the weird metal bracket covering the left steering column bolt and use a 10 mm socket to tighten it. Push the lower column trim up to snap it together with the upper piece and reinstall the small Phillips head bolt. The plastic vent duct goes in next. Install the right side first, then the left. The push pin starts with the pin sticking out and is locked when you push the pin flat. This metal panel can hang from the little hook above the middle bolt. Install all three bolts with your fingers first, then go back and tighten them with a 10 mm socket. Snap the fuse box back into the lower plastic trim, then reinstall the hood release cable back into the handle. The lower plastic is held on by four snaps. The upper right corner slides under the trim by the ignition switch. Install two screws at the bottom of the plastic trim. From left to right, plug in the center locking differential, hazard flasher, and defroster switches, then push them into the dashboard. Reinstall the climate control trim bezel and push it straight in to snap it in. Push the AC button into place, then install the knobs. Are they knobs? I feel like knobs are round. Install the rubber ring around the ignition switch with the cutout slot facing up. Pull the lower right corner of the plastic toward you so the top part of the radio trim can fit under it. Install the last two screws and the radio faceplate. That's it. All right, the hardest part of fixing the clock in the RAV4 is getting it out of there. Now I know some of you guys out there are great at finagling and bending things, and you might be able to skip some steps and get the clock out of there. Now if you can do that without breaking anything, more power to you. And if you've never soldered before, don't be afraid of it. Just get the soldering iron, practice on some pieces of wire, and once you get the hang of it, then you can fix your clock. As always, thank you for watching, and I'll see you guys next time.